Fly a fair nation. Fly a fair nation. Thank you for tuning into the Pointless Talks podcast. While I was looking up things to talk about today, I fell into a rabbit hole. Um, sidebar. I've always wondered, is the term rabbit hole a derivative from Alice in Wonderland, or did Alice in Wonderland use that term to coin the story? Anyways, you guys can Google it, let me know. I didn't actually look into it. But I saw this ad for an article on Pink News, which is a UK blog, and I'm literally going to read through it for you because it touched me in a way that, like, I've been wanting to discuss this topic for on the show for a really long time, but I wanted a panel of people to discuss it with, but... The article is titled, Straight Men Have a Lot of Gay Sex, (laughs) Um, study show apparently. So there's basically a survey thing going, and the survey basically analyzed about 24,000 undergraduate students, and it revealed that of the men whose last hookups was with a male partner, one in eight defined as heterosexual. So basically what that means is out of 24,000 men, well, 24,000 students, out of all the men whose last hookup was with a male, they consider themselves to be heterosexual, despite the sex with another man. So the figure was twice as high among women, with one in four whose last sexual experience was was a lesbian one, identifying as straight. So something that a lot of us already know, most women, you know, I shouldn't say most, but more women are more prone? I guess, I don't know what the term is, but it's more likely to find a woman in a same-sex involvement with a wo- like than it is to find a male, but we'll get into the specifics of that later. But basically it's saying one in four whose last sexual experience with a, was a lesbian one, they identify as straight. So the article goes on to say, explanation for this gap in same-sex encounters between men and women is that based on another study, it basically shows that these people are in much (laughs) oh yeah the topic of women being much more likely to orgasm during sex with women rather than during sex with men but (laughs) then it talks about like you know why straight men like gay porn and all these other things that basically tie into the idea of you know heterosexual people having homosexual encounters or homosexual sex rather so the study on that with the orgasm thing said that 2,300 respondents found that women were 33% more likely to orgasm when they were having sex with another woman. And (laughs) there was a whole uproar about that. And a lot of people were talking about it. You know, of course, the lesbian community was like, of course, duh, that's why they be bagging straight girls and da-da-da-da. But yeah, there's (laughs) this all ties into like a bunch of other things that I've been wanting to talk about. But like I said, I don't want to just be something that I'm personally just ranting on. I want it to be something that I can have a conversation with somebody with who has either been in the situation or have been on the other side, like some way, somehow directly correlates with the experience and things of that nature, because I don't go after straight people. (laughs) So I don't uh, well, straight women. So I don't necessarily have room to really talk on that subject but it says that the newly released results were discovered by Ariel Kupperberg an associate from the University of North Carolina and they published um, in the archives of sexual behavior heterosexual college students who hook up with same-sex partners so it listed some characteristics of people who have sexual experiences with the same-sex partner but continues um continue to say ugh continue to self-identify as straight so they're saying that one of the reasons for this is more conservative attitudes or people who identify this because they are they have less experience with people of the same sex or something of the sort this is the three types of people that they explain they're compromising 60 percent of the students could be classified as mostly private sexual experimentation among those who with little prior same-sex experience including some who did not enjoy the encounter. So some of them didn't like it, but that's not necessarily what the thing is about. It's just the survey is just about people saying, hey, I did it, but I'm straight. Like, <laughs> So whether they enjoy it or not, there's that percentage. Then there's two other groups who enjoy the encounter but defer on basically saying it was a drunken experience or desired a future relationship with their partner. So though (laughs) they said that some of the hookups were explained away as performative bisexuality by women 
the factor made up a small minority of the students, which is just 12 percent. And more than one in four, which is 28 percent, had strong religious practices and or beliefs that may preclude a non-heterosexual identity, including 7 percent who exhibited internalized heterosexism. Okay, (laughs) so that ties back into things that we've talked about on the show before, as far as, you know, people who actually do identify as a member of the LGBTQ who struggle with it because of their religion and things of that nature, or, you know, family outlook, even if it's not a religion-based thing, just, you know, conservative idea, whatever the case is, and... There's the article goes on to talk about another stu- um, study that they did in March that says no one is 100% heterosexual. Uh, <laughs> I have my feelings about that, but um, it's this research basically just studied the reaction of men and women who identified as heterosexual when they were shown different kinds of pornographic material. The study's author said he wasn't surprised by the research findings, but that he was shocked how many people still identified as heterosexual despite the evidence. So. Whether they got excited, I did look in the complete details of what the experiment did outside of just showing them the visual effects. Like, what exactly did they monitor? Was it the heart rate? Was <laughs> Were they monitoring erections? Like, what exactly were they monitoring when they're doing this? Or was it just, like, a comparative thing where they show them something heterosexual and something homosexual? And, excuse me, if it's the same reaction, then, hey, this is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So there's that. So despite the results of hey, you might have been enticed by this, they still claim themselves to be heterosexual. So it goes on to say, we're trying to get away that some people, get at the way that some people really are. Sometimes it seems people are one way, but believe they have to report themselves in another way, and that's not good. Same thing we said about identifying as, you know, a lot of times the bisexual thing that I said before, like, a lot of bisexuals identify as either straight or heterosexual despite their attraction to the other gender. So, like, I know people who identify as lesbians that (laughs) are attracted to men, like sexually, romantically, emotionally attracted to men. But because of the stigma placed on bisexuals, like the idea that, quote-unquote, we don't know what we want, they're confused, and all the other downplaying that comes with the idea of being bisexual... A lot of people will just, you know, say, I'm a lesbian. A lot of women would say, I'm a lesbian. Or, I'm straight. Or even if you don't even necessarily say you're either or, people will assume because you're in a relationship with either or that you're that specific (laughs) orientation and that's it. Like, if you're in a long-term relationship with a woman, they're going to be like, oh, you're a lesbian now. (laughs) No, I still find people, you know, the opposite sex attractive. And a lot of the times with gay um bisexual men they're believed to be gay especially if they're a bottom like they're believed to be gay automatically because you know once you take a dick you're gay (laughs) like that's that's the stigma a lot of people have about that so I can understand that statement about you know feeling like how people feel like they should be and then portraying themselves as such for that so they added to the findings that you know they proved a loosening quote-unquote loosening of the boundaries and they believe that that's happening for both sexes it's probably a good thing because it gives kids growing up more diversity more options so they don't feel like they have to fit in at all costs which I can agree with that to an extent but (laughs) I feel like it's all based on how (laughs) you wrap these things up because you can easily say that you know you're putting things out there so children growing up have a more diverse outlook on life than, you know, when we were growing up and the people before us and things like that, where, you know, you get to see more difference. It's not just all <laughs> white people or it's not just all, um, you know what I'm saying, straight people. It's not all just one thing. You get a diverse, you get a diverse, like a variety of things that you get to see where, you're like, okay, well, if I feel this way, then maybe I'm not completely strange because, you know, it's on TV. Like, I can experiment with this. Like, you know what I'm saying? I can explore this feeling a little bit so that I don't, like, they don't think something's wrong with them in a sense. So that's that's my take on that. So, <clears throat> so after I read the article, I was ready to go in because I have all these feelings about, you know, 
the whole being involved with the same sex and claiming something else or even just the title itself like you know straight men that have a lot of gay sex <laughs> it happens you know there's people on the download there's people in the closet there's all types of instances where this happens but something told me to read the comments because I'm a comment reader and everyone knows the fun is always in the comments but I saw the first response and I had to stop and like I'm gonna read you guys this because that just put me on a whole other like I told you guys like in the beginning I fell into a rabbit hole <laughs> like this isn't even what I was looking up I was looking up something completely different and I just fell into this whole thing but the first commenter says that what this study does is correlate a more or less objective data point what gender did you last have sex with with something that is social cultural construction sexual identity that these don't always line up will be a surprise only to those who think social sexual labels represent types of people rather than just our current understanding of where we are in the world Okay, that's the first part because it's a pretty lengthy response. So based on that, I feel like he's just saying, you know, who you had sex with last does not say who you are. It just basically says, this is where I was in a point in time. This is what happened. It doesn't necessarily identify your sexual identity. Okay, I can take that. So then he goes on to say, there are two problems with this with the labels. The first is that they rely on culture. 150 years ago, a roll in the hay with your cousin or a blowjob from a buddy on a fishing trip might be something to consider in confession at church, but not a challenge to reconsider who you were. There was no LGBT community, community to join. You would just get married and make it work. Everyone was heterosexual. Some were just better at it than other people. There are still cultures that accommodate intragender sexual activity inside a heterosexual identity. So culture not only influences who we have sex with, it also tells us what it means. That is a very valid point because you think about like even beyond 150 years ago, if you look at like ancient history and things of that nature, if even like Greek and all this other stuff, men were having sex with men. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of things have changed the way we view what is quote unquote socially acceptable. And even the fact of like what they said, you know, a role in a sack with your cousin we hear that now we're just like ew that's nasty that's incest that's gross because <laughs> you know what i'm saying in this day and age that is what it is like you call somebody a cousin fucker <laughs> or like you know what i'm saying you kissing cousins and all that other stuff and those are things that are frowned on because in our society in this day and age that is not okay like and then it goes into other scientific reasons and biological reasons as far as reproduction and things of that nature but then there's the argument of, you know, hey, we came from Adam and Eve. <laughs> Somewhere along the line, there's some cousin fucking going on. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's some kind of incest somewhere in there. So, like, like I said, it's with the times. It's with the culture also because, like they're saying, you know, in certain regions and certain cultures, it's okay to do these things. It's okay to, you know what I'm saying, but you still carry on your life as a functioning member of society. Nobody's looking at you weird because you did this. You're still able to uphold your status and your stature and everything else despite whatever it is that you did with your cousin or with somebody of the same gender or whatever the case is. Now, one of the things I've noticed with looking back at all these things, you see like you see like these paintings of, like the naked woman and things of that nature and the naked man and all these and sex for women was so taboo I shouldn't say taboo but the point of sex for women was mostly to please men and to reproduce and things of that nature <laughs> it wasn't necessarily for the pleasure of the woman so some of these times you'll see these paintings of the woman together and you'll be like they look like they're in complete bliss, like woman and woman and there's no men around and none of these things. And they're all, you know, just frolicking happily, whatever the case is. They look genuinely like they're in bliss euphoria, like they look genuinely, you know, pleased. That's one of the things that the article was talking about. Also, you know, like women being mostly pleased, like the majority of women getting more pleasure when they're having female on female sexual encounter. So something to think about so back to the um comment so the second problem as he says and the one that we run into here with the study is that we think the labels tell us who people have sex with so yes <laughs> yes because someone says lesbian you think automatically a woman having sex with a woman somebody says gay you think predominantly a male having sex with a male 
bisexual, either gender, having sex with either or. So there's that. But sexual activity and identity have never matched up. For men, I think that Woody Allen summed it up in the movie Manhattan when Woody is confronted at a cocktail party by a woman who mentioned that she recently discovered that she's been having the wrong kind of orgasm. Really, he asked, because I've never had the wrong kind. Everyone was right on the money. There we go again with the males being pleased with all their sexual encounters and women just being at the same time kind of like, um, this isn't going all the way over for me. So there's that. So then it's like at a certain level for men, an orgasm is an orgasm and everything that surrounds it is window dressing. Need evidence? Glory holes. For those of you who don't know what a glory hole is, <laughs> if you've ever seen what was that scary movie <laughs> where they have like the little hole in the bathroom or a hole in a gas station or whatever, you just put your man parts in there and whatever wets it at the other end is whatever wets it and you get off and carry on with your life so that's the reference so need an evidence glory hole a glory hole doesn't require soul searching about sexual identity we can expect a specific situation location like prison the navy etc where msm men sex men sex men happens disconnects it from identity so they're saying that basically you know and the navy though (laughs) um so prison and other situations where males have sex with men it happens but it doesn't necessarily mean that they are emotionally involved or emotionally vested or any kind of you know tied to this outside of hey we got this off and that's it so it's disconnected from identity is what he's saying so he continues to say same-sex activity has been a part of human experience probably as long as there have been humans true The only difference between people is when given the choice between a sex partner of either gender, which we prefer. Okay? Preference. But the idea that most people only have sex with the opposite gender without exception is relatively recent. A hyper-heterosexuality that came to be in response to the recognition and acceptance of homosexuality. So, they're saying basically that because homosexuality has become accepted, quote-unquote, That is why people feel the need to label themselves as heterosexual, to basically give themselves a divide, a separation from being labeled homosexual, despite it being accepted. So there's that. So it's just recently. Okay. So the myth that has developed in our own culture is that, quote unquote, real straight men don't do things like that. Actually, they do sometimes and it doesn't make them less heterosexual. It just makes them normal males. Okay, I agree and disagree with this article on many different levels, but this last statement about, you know, it doesn't make them less heterosexual, it makes them more normal, and, you know, real straight men don't do this. That's one of the things we touched on about, like, hyper-masculinity and the idea that men aren't, quote-unquote, allowed to do certain things, or then that means they are something else like that means that they're gay (laughs) you know what I'm saying like if you see a man that's more effeminate or more into his looks or you know quote-unquote metrosexual they have all these labels for all these different things and it ties into how men quote-unquote should portray themselves get me and it goes the same way for women also because you know women are quote-unquote expected to be feminine and you know soft and whatever the minute a woman decides she wants to wear pants to church or you know what I'm saying doesn't want to wear heels or doesn't want to dress herself up in a feminine manner and wants to be more androgynous in appearance or anything else even if she isn't you know any kind of homosexual or whatever the case is queer etc it's just what she's comfortable in she's looked at as different like something is wrong with her in an essence so I, I understand and I completely agree with that portion of it because these these stigmas that you put on people and men will be quick to say oh nobody's going to define who I am and how I am and how I present myself or anything of the sort like they're going to be quick to defend themselves and say no I decided this because I'm okay with this and this is how I feel comfortable doing even if they really are not because at the end of the day no matter how much you say you don't want to fit in you don't want to <laughs> you don't necessarily care what people think about you or what people say about you most people really do care and it's something that they are probably struggling with internally or fighting with or whatever the case is so the idea of quote-unquote seeming normal to the outside world society family friends that is important to a lot of people which is why a lot of people do not come out 
Now, I love that this part touched on, you know, sex in prison, like man on man sex in prison, because yesterday, <laughs> well, if you guys are listen- aren't listening live, you're listening, whatever, last week, Tuesday, um, a young lady called in to shoot her shot with a guy who she was dating. Now, for those who don't know, Shoot Your Shot is a segment on The Breakfast Club where callers get to call into the show and basically say, hey, there's somebody I'm feeling, I'm trying to take it to the next step, or hey, I know this person, I want to see where this can go, whether it's a booty call, it's a relationship, whatever it is, whatever like next level you're trying to take it to, Breakfast Club will, you know, call them up for you, and as long as you have their number, they're not out here looking for people's numbers, but they call them up for you, and you basically just embarrass yourself on radio <laughs> to say hey can i get a chance with you even if like the scenarios range from like literally there's this one guy who called in because the girl at the pharmacy <laughs> he thought she was cute and he found her number on facebook or some creepy shit like that and they called but the breakfast club didn't know that that's how he acquired her number he thought that she gave it to him or some way somehow he happened across it not like went and was being a freaking stalker so you know there's situations like that and there's people who are you know it's a booty call or y'all it's a side piece and you want to be the main chick like it's a bunch it's it's all over the board right so basically what happened was this girl was talking to this guy they met at work and he got incarcerated some scamming shit whatever and he got locked up so while he's locked up, you know, she says she's putting a hundred dollars a month on his books. They're writing letters to each other. They're talking. They're great. She's feeling like this is like the shit. Like this relationship is real. It's about to be everything that she ever wanted. Like everything is busting. They have a real connection. And me listening to it while I'm driving, I'm just like, sis, you sound like <laughs> you basically got like use they don't say like the man is in jail of course he's gonna talk to you you know he ain't got nobody to talk to of course he's you know gonna be telling you sweet nothings and doing whatever whatever apparently there was like doing like real cute shit though like going on dates and cooking together and (laughs) all types of shit like that but he ghosted her so angela Yee was even saying like sis duh they're in jail they're gonna take all the support that they can take you know i'm saying they locked up so if he's writing you you writing him of course he's gonna write you back you put in a hundred dollars a month on his books i mean that might not sound like a lot but it's better than the nigga that's sitting next to you that's not getting nothing so whatever it is that he got to do to keep you there basically he's doing so this chick is like hard down like no 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 we had a genuine connection this was real I'm not taking this as, you know, a flyby situationship type of thing. Like, this could be something for real. So, I'm like, all right, okay, we'll see what he says when you call him. <laughs> so, it's just basically the attitude that they have, too. So, they call the guy up, whatever, he answers, and she's like, yo, what's up? You know what I'm saying? You, like, went Jedi on me. Like, what happened? Blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? What's good? Like, you know what I'm saying? What's good? Like, I'm trying to see what's really good with us. You dipped on me. I thought we had something going. I thought we were building on something. Whatever, whatever. And my boy, like, chokes up. Like, he answered the phone first. And he's like, oh, hey, what's up, girl? How you doing? Like, you know, how are you? And when I say he choked up, like, (sighs) first of all, I'm listening to this. And I'm like, yo, buddy got a wife and kids. He about to tell her that, you know what I'm saying? His baby mom's found out. Shit's about to go left. Like, she about to be embarrassed. She about to feel like, yo, this nigga just, you know, use you. Basically, like, Angelie Yee just said, he used you, and that's what happened. Like, she, I'm about to be like, damn, this nigga trifling, right? So I'm listening, listening, and when I said buddy choked up, he was doing, like, y'all know how I be stuttering on the show? <laughs> he was doing all that, but he was like, uh, uh, um, 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 see, uh, what ha- 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 and it was, it was hard to listen to. I was like, yo, he's really nervous right now. This is not like some fuck nigga about to be like, see what had happened was, right? I had this baby mom. Like, it wasn't nothing stupid like that. He was really choked up, and he was like, a situation happened, like, you know, and he was really having a hard time saying this to her and the whole like the anticipation is building for me because I'm like what is he he's like you know something happened and I'm like what do you mean something happened like what happened dude like what happened like somebody got pregnant somebody gave birth you your daddy now like I'm thinking about shit like that like you know what I'm saying like I'm not thinking about nothing or whatever that's that's what I'm thinking usually that's the story niggas in jail his real wife comes and you know it's like what's going on whatever so he basically divulges that he had a male-on-male experience like he 
ended up in some male sex while he was locked up. Now, this is the part where the Breakfast Club jumps in. And they're basically like, whoa, wow, you were very honest about this. And I'm just like, yo, I mean, thanks for breaking it up before he went any deeper. But at the same time, like, y'all are so insensitive. Like, really? This man, obviously, you can hear that he's having some kind of anguish about this. Like, this girl is telling y'all that she's feeling this man. Like, she's falling for him. Like, they're, you know, she thought they were on the path to <laughs> forever dumb or whatever the fuck. Or trying to make it forever dumb. And he's telling her, like, hey, I went to jail. And something happened with another man. And y'all just jumped in, like, whatever. So, I don't know if Charlemagne was in the bathroom or whatever, but when he comes back, they basically were just like, oh, he had butt sex. <laughs> like, it was so insensitive. And granted, the truth is the truth no matter how you spin it. Certain things you need to be a little bit sensitive about, especially when it's something that the people involved aren't even all the way comfortable with. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> my boss at work likes to tell me, you put on your kitty gloves in certain situations because... Not everybody is as cold and insensitive as you guys are. So now, my thing with this is, I know from listening to The Breakfast Club that they're very problematic. Like, they are, they have ratings. You know what I'm saying? They, they're, the whole point of any product that you put into the media is to get ratings, to get reviews, to get views. Like, even this show that I'm doing right now, like, the whole point of it is to get the word out, to get fans, to get people to listen, get people to like, get people to subscribe. Some way, somehow, it is to create, it is a business, it's, there's some means to an end for it. Like, there's some kind of revenue that is to be earned from doing this shit properly, right? And whether properly means being politically correct or being a dickhead about something, you're going to get people to listen and people are going to spread the word like I'm doing now. Whether the it's negative publicity or good publicity, it's still publicity at the end of the day. And you guys are probably going to go listen to this interview. Whatever. I don't knock it. But my thing is, I mean, knowing that Crystal and Fury, like, literally, like, oh, yeah, I do listen to them. <laughs> knowing that they have, like low-key personal relationship with Charlemagne and have talked to him about sensitizing himself as far as the LGBTQ community goes and about people coming out and about all types of other things and the way that they continue to carry on when situations like this present themselves it's just a direct reflection that they really don't give a fuck like okay outside of the radio personality you might care but how much do you really care if it all it takes for you to go against how much you care is a check like yeah we all got mouths to feed you got family you got kids you got bills you got all this but you can still stand up for something like what do you what do you actually represent like what are you standing up for okay you're not a part of the community cool whatever we get that but that doesn't mean you're supposed to mock people that are or mock people that are questioning that so Back to this guy's situation, like, I felt bad at this point, because at first I was like, oh, shit, this nigga's trash, and then I'm just like, damn, homie, like, you had your first male encounter, from my take, like, it's his first encounter, because now he's saying that he's, he needs to figure some things out, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He was in a situation with a guy while he was locked up, we don't know if it was forced, and that was one of the things that asked, is like, were you raped or did you, or are you gay? And I was like, <laughs> whether he was raped, well, I shouldn't say that, not whether he was raped. If he was raped, him being gay or him being straight, it's still rape. Whether he enjoyed it or in retrospect, it, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's a stupid question to ask someone. Were you raped or are you gay? Like, really? Like, really? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, with everything going on right now, rape jokes are not funny at all. Like, that's one thing that you dead at this point. Like, there's no ha ha he he. Some butt sex happened in prison. It was non consensual. Like, we know butt sex happens in prison all the time, consensual and not. So, you trying to be like ha ha about it? That's not cool. So, the whole idea that he's like, you know, he's struggling with this himself, and he keeps saying on the show, he's like, you know, I'm not talking about this on the radio, which I completely agree. Like, dude, you are just basically coming out to this woman that hey I had a homosexual experience I don't know how to process this I'm trying to figure it out that doesn't mean that I don't like you I'm trying to figure it out he doesn't necessarily know where he is if the feeling that he got from being with a man was greater than the feeling he got from being with her or with any other woman so that's a very valid place to be with a situation like that and I'm pretty sure 
a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, I shouldn't say a lot, but I'm pretty sure this situation happens on many occasions where whether it be prison or hazing, because I know some frats, they do participate in shit like that with hazing where, you know, (laughs) yeah, that shit happens. And then people are left to question themselves. And for someone else to think that that is funny, that's, it's not like you basically imposed on someone's life, basically, like, their whole life. Well, I shouldn't even say that because maybe he had thoughts, maybe he wasn't sure, maybe he thought, you know, hey, everybody has gay thoughts or whatever the case, or maybe he never had a thought before in his life, and now, you know what I'm saying? But my question around that is, was it the sex that is making him question himself, or was it what happened after? Did he have any kind of emotional tie with the person like after the sex happened like did he end up having like a jail boo like you know what I'm saying like did they end up because you know, he was like shorty was saying you told me everything that happened like we wrote all the time da, 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 da. and he's like i didn't tell you everything so you know what i'm saying like was he playing both sides and angelie you kept saying you know don't lead people on don't lead people on and he hit her back with the touche like yeah well it's not right to lead people on but it's also not right to call people on the radio and not tell them that they're on the radio duh (laughs) but yeah I'm just I want to know for my personal nosy ass reasons like his questioning was it just because of the sex because for those who don't know the male g-spot is in their anus it's not deep in there (laughs) but it is that is where it is located it can be stimulated internally or externally you can read up on that if you want to but is it, you know, maybe he had the best nut of his life. Maybe he had the best orgasm. Maybe he had an experience where he thought he was nothing for, you know, all these years and it was great. But then he finds out shit gets better. Shit gets better with penetration. And he's trying to figure out, is it penetration that he likes or is it men? Because he didn't come right out and say, I'm gay or that I'm bisexual. And Angela Yee kept pushing the idea that maybe he's bi, maybe he likes both. And then Shorty, after talking about how much she cares about him and all of this, just outright is like, I don't know if I can deal with this. And I think, like, um, don't quote me, but I believe she said, ew, while he was talking, like, while she was realizing what happened or what he was trying to say. And I was like, damn, bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You just finished basically trying to pour your heart out, basically saying, like, you thirsting over this nigga, and you find out that something happened to him, and now it's ew, like, that is the reason people don't come out. That right there, like, that is why people do not come out, because... It's sex. It's sex. It happens. Shit happens. Like, if he happens to be gay, okay, he's gay. If he happens to be bisexual, okay, he's bisexual. But if you're saying all the stuff about, oh, you care about me, you care about him, and y'all had a connection, it was cool, it was deep, and all of this, the minute you find out that he had a gay experience, it's now ill. You know what I'm saying? And that is one of the reasons, like I said before, why bisexual men will say that they are gay or live on the down low. Like, they're living in the closet. They're dating women and they're fucking men because you can't live both lives at all time for certain people in certain circles because society is closed-minded and the idea that they've planted is you have to be one or the other. Whether you're male or female, you have to be one or the other. Either you like girls or you like boys. There's no in-between and that's it that's bullshit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's bullshit. You're, you're entitled to enjoy yourself and fulfill yourself to whatever it is that you desire, as long as you're not harming anyone and, or well, without consent. And <laughs> it's, it's not fair. Life's not fair. But at the same time, when it comes to sex, like people are so uptight about what people are doing in their bedroom that does not involve them. So my thing is, if you're a woman and you're attracted to a man. The two of you are involved. He is monogamous. What does it matter that he likes men on the side? Well, not I shouldn't say on the side. He's attracted to men. Or that in the past he's had sex with men. Why does that matter right now? You know what I'm saying? Should you not be more concerned with his STD status? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what kind of person he is, things that are actually going to affect you in the long run. Like, people are caught up on so many things like labels that it's it's ridiculous. So, I mean, 
I understand. Like I talked about this the other day. I forgot who I was talking to about you know why people don't come out and why it's so hard for people to come out even as adults because it's a never ending conversation. Shit like this is always happening on in many different levels, like on different different ways. So it's not even like oh I'm afraid to lose my family, but like people are really judgmental and. Whether, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, you want to just come out and say, hey, I had, like, honestly, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of men that have had man-on-man sex that you will never find out that happened because of the stigma against it. Because they're automatically going to say, you're gay if you had sex with a man. My views on that? Not quite. Because having sex and enjoying sex and preferring sex are all completely different things. You might have had an experimental phase, like the article says, where, you know, you you and your homeboy, you and your cousin, or you and whoever the case is, you wanted to try something. You were just like, I wonder. Like, we're young, we're ex- experimenting, or whatever the case is. Let's see what happens. Mm, I didn't like that. That's not going to happen again. That doesn't mean you're gay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That means that you had an experience. That doesn't mean that that doesn't define who you are or what your role in any relationship or sex is. Like, just like people that are versed. I mean, you might have played bottom sometimes. You like to play top sometimes. It's whatever the case is. That doesn't define you as a person. So that's <laughs> that's my take on that. But what I was actually looking up <laughs> before I fell into this rabbit hole um phoenix is about to join the list of people who have rainbow crosswalks uh i was i saw it online today and it says that you know they're having a crosswalk to basically celebrate lgbtq pride and it's going to be permanent though because sometimes they do it in certain cities where like when pride is coming up you know pride's about a month away we're in may now pride is june for those who don't know and they usually paint the crosswalks rainbow colors so and then afterward it goes back to whatever the color it is it's been done in many different cities all over the country and there's some in Canada and stuff also but Phoenix is joining the group and theirs is going to be permanent now city council voted that it's going to stay that way and the groups will have to pay to maintain it so the city is not going to be the ones that are funding the paint and the upkeep and everything <laughs> of the crosswalk. So, I mean, that's a good look. You know saying you have rainbow crosswalks just to, you know, show solidarity and saying that, hey, we support you guys and it's inclusive. So, go Phoenix. <laughs> but there's a long list of other places that, you know what I'm saying, have this already in place. There's a lot of places in California that have it. There is, what is it, San Francisco, of course, West Hollywood, Long Beach, and then there's um, 11 crosswalks in Seattle, which, wow. And there's an LGBT-friendly um, neighborhood in Capitol Hill. There's Key West, Florida, of course, for those who've been. <laughs> they have a rainbow crosswalk also. Miami Beach, um, Ocean and 12, where gay beaches, as I call it. <laughs> they have rainbow crosswalk also. There's one in Philadelphia, Toronto, Canada, Vancouver, Ottawa, whoa, Swift Current, that's in Saskatchewan, (laughs) yeah, they got theirs this year with, you know, Crosswalk on the 200 block of Central Avenue and Swift Current, they have theirs also, I mean, that's, that's good, I'm saying, there's spreading visibility, some people might just see it as, hey, it's a colorful sidewalk, (laughs) that's all it is to them, but for those who do know what it represents, I'm pretty sure that they are rejoicing that, you know, hey, my city supports me, my city state stands behind me, and they are LGBT friendly, as a, as a government anyways, because these are all government based decisions, because nobody can't just come paint, you know what I'm saying, the street, that's government property technically, so, there's that. I have a bunch of other topics that I want to talk about, but I didn't get to finish watching Love and Hip Hop. <laughs> so I'm going to come back with my spice uh, <laughs> recap uh, probably next week. But I mean, that's about it. <laughs> um, thank you guys for tuning in. We're going to wrap this up. Please don't forget, as usual, you know, every other week we tell you follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, Instagram. Everything there is Pointless Talks. On SoundCloud and Apple Music, it's Pointless Talks Podcast. If you like us, rate us, give us five stars. 
And whether you got here on purpose or by fate, thank you again for tuning in.